When I think of the Beethoven symphonies, all nine of them, I think of them as nine miracles. Each, each and every one of them is a universe unto itself. And in many ways, it's a, it's a moment in time and how one complemented the other one. The sixth, you have to understand, was written pretty much at the same time as the fifth. And they are very connected in so many ways. And they premiered on the same night. Can you imagine that, having fifth and sixth symphony on the same night? And they are completely opposite. Cha-cha-cha-cha, cha-cha-cha-cha. The same things that inspired Beethoven into writing this great music, and the same applies to Mozart and the great Bach, are the same things that we think about today, the same things that Beethoven was afraid of, we are afraid of today. The world hasn't changed very much when you think about it, the basic thing. Yes, we have more technology and we have phones and things that are you know, in our hands, but the basic humanity thinks of fear and joy and anger are still the same. And in this music, you hear not only the optimism, but you hear that challenge. And especially now in 2020, with this pandemic, this music, I think, has an even bigger meaning because we understand when Beethoven wrote his music, especially in the early 1800s, Europe was in great danger because of the Napoleonic Wars and Vienna was constantly being bombarded and Beethoven lived with this and the music reflects that. So we have to understand that even though this music may be 200 years old, the message is still the same. And I think that that's what people understand very clearly. Also, it's so beautiful that it is completely eternal. So when you hear it, it just touches your soul. Beethoven was special. I think maybe it was Beethoven's personality. Also, you may remember that with Bach and with Mozart and with Haydn, there was a relationship with royalty. So they had people that they had to answer to, maybe the prince or the kings. So they had to be careful. Beethoven didn't have to answer to anybody. So I think the fact that he could just write whatever he wanted gave him a sense of freedom that I think uh, allowed him to push things a little bit further. And let's face it, even now, for me, in 2020, his music sounds incredibly fresh and new. I can only imagine what people thought in 1808 or 1803 when this music was played, what they thought about it. Um, because yes, I mean, it still has the ability to shock you, which I think is what Beethoven wanted. Do you know how embarrassing it is to be the most famous and celebrated composer in Vienna, in Europe, probably. And yet you have to tell people, can you please yell here so I can listen to you? Do you know how depressing and how uh, demeaning that is to such a great artist? So no wonder he was frustrated. We know from his Heiligenstadt Testament that he wrote when he was young, he was thinking of killing himself. This is a reality. Beethoven was dealing with some very strong feelings that maybe he needed to leave the world. But at the same moment, he used this challenge that life gave him to tell us that maybe he will be able, as he said, to grab fate by the throat and be able to do it. You hear it in the Fifth Symphony. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. Fate knocking at the door. But then the ending, the sun comes out. Maybe the world, maybe fate will forgive him and let him. Unfortunately though, the reality was different. He went completely deaf, but his music, maybe in his music and in his dreams, he could live that happily ever after life, like in the Disney movies. As a professional conductor, the Beethoven symphonies are like the ABCs. This is a language that you have to be able to speak. And you have to not only know the music, but also know the story behind them and know how Beethoven evolved, how Beethoven changed, and how the music reflected where the world was moving. Sometimes he was a little ahead, you know? There are many composers nowadays that I think were 200 years ahead of us. We haven't, we still don't understand them, but in their minds, they were somewhere else. I think Beethoven, 
was one of those composers that, that we was, in many ways he was far ahead of his time. But uh, this is music that is in my DNA. I have loved this music as far as I can remember. I still get the same feelings of goosebumps when I hear it. And of course, to conduct it with a fabulous orchestra like the Gulbenkian is even the greatest dream that I can think of. Because we all know the music, of course, but at the same time, you need to bring something new. I don't want it to sound, you know, the same. If you want to hear the same piece the same way, go listen to a recording. When you come to a live performance, you want to have a sense of adventure and something new. So I hope that when people come and listen to these performances, that they will listen to them with, with fresh ears. And to me, every time that I explore this music is different because I am not the person that I was five years ago. I am not the person that I was uh, a year ago even. I mean, let's face it, this year has been kind of a shock to all of us. So I am looking at this in a very different manner. But uh, I cannot imagine a better way to make music with my dear friends at Gulbenkian Orchestra than with celebrating the genius and the miracle that are these Beethoven symphonies. <laughs>